Hi again. It's been a while since I posted. Sorry about that. It's a mixture of being busy at work, uh, very tired, thanks to work. Uh, and some, I'll be honest, just been feeling down and depressed. Um, my wife went on holiday for about three weeks, I think she was away, in uh, February, early March. And for me, I got no problem with her going on holiday. I'm dead proud of the girl for going and, you know, enjoying herself. But I felt a few times that, what's the point? I can't go anywhere. I cannot go on holiday anymore. Uh, I can't go. Even going to a hotel or something like in this country is difficult now. And it's all a realisation that the MS is really messing things up for me. So I had about four weeks, five weeks of feeling down, sad, not caring, uh, feeling useless, just off with everything in the world, just absolutely everything was just not worthwhile, um, couldn't be bothered, and okay, this is probably giving you the impression I don't care and not bothered, this is because it's uh, the weekend is Easter, so as you can see, this isn't to do with not caring. This is to do with it's Easter, uh, it's Easter Sunday today. And uh, the I usually let it go wild if I'm on holiday or anything like that. So uh, apologies for the scruffiness. I will get rid of it as soon as I get home tonight, I promise. Feeling quite down in off in um, February, March time. Uh, end of February, I had to go for an MRI scan as well, which just added to the frustration. Uh, those who've had MRI scans, they are just just an hour of lying down on your back. I hate sleeping on my back. Uh, just laying on my back, listening to a thing go clunk, 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 clunk. Uh, they don't even play music anymore. Um, but... Yeah, here was uh, the neck and uh, head scan for the neurologist, see if the Casemta uh, drug I'm on is working by slowing things down. Don't know. I've not had any urgent phone calls from the um, neurologist, so, but the depression was really kind of bad. Um, I was getting up at half past two in the morning, getting showered and getting ready for work and then just staring at the wall and things. But having the two girls around did give me some sense of order. By mid-March, I was feeling really, really low. So I just needed to get out of the house for a bit, coming home from work, staring at the wall, going back to work, coming home, staring at the walls, going back to work, kind of thing was getting on my nerves. So middle of March I went to North Bristol Amateur Radio Club, member of the club and have been for years but I just needed to get out so I went to the club. I'm glad I did so I was talking to Dave who I owe a lot to. He doesn't really know half of what he did for me that night. Um, we're doing a special event, uh, amateur radio special event towards the middle of this year. I'll try and describe it a little bit uh, bit further on in the video but the event itself was uh, primarily for North Bristol Amateur Radio Club but the event itself has grown and grown and grown. So Dave asked me to go with him to the, uh, the South Bristol Radio Club to do a presentation on the event what we're doing and ask them if they would like to get involved. So the following Thursday we went to South Bristol so we had a few issues at South Bristol Radio Club, only minor issues. Uh, there's a few steps to go up the side of a, uh, it's behind, I guess it's the uh, the dressing rooms uh, behind a stage. And uh, there's a f five steps to go up. Uh, Dave helped me with the uh, the walker he carried out for me and I just sort of struggled up the steps behind him. But we made it. We were really, really warmly welcomed to the club and are really happy and willing to get involved with us, which is great. 
it was kind of fun because we also got invited two weeks later, uh, which was last weekend for me, uh, to go to one of the South Bristol Radio Club events, which they were doing at a place called Western Zoyland, which is down in Somerset, uh, down in the southwest of uh, England. It's an old uh, World War II uh, RAF uh, airbase runway and things. And we went down there on the Sunday. Absolutely fabulous. It was great. Uh, we were very welcomed. Um, it was great company, and we had a good time. It was really good fun, and really uh, really got me interested back in the radio again. Just as well, really, because we've got this uh, special event station coming up. But now, Dave's encouragement to go down to South Bristol and to go to the uh, the event last weekend is really, really turn me around I don't feel down the cloud and doom that I had over me is gone I feel happy I feel you know good again um, my wife came back and she enjoyed her holiday as well which I'm glad and really happy that she went so yeah I think things have definitely turned around and I, again a lot of that is down to Dave anyway this special event that I've been talking about um, in the first week of June, uh, North Bristol and now South Bristol Partnership, we're putting together a commemoration station for the uh, commemorating the 80th year of the loss of Flight 777 over the Bay of Biscay. The aircraft was shot down, possibly by mistake possibly on purpose there's lots and lots and lots of uh, conspiracies flying around about it on board flight 777 uh, were four crew and uh, 13 passengers the youngest was 18 months and was the daughter of a lieutenant colonel in the British Army uh, his wife and uh, elder child were on the flight. Uh, there was also uh, Hollywood actor Leslie Howard. There was also Wilfred uh, Israel on the flight who was a businessman and had actively participated in uh, the kinder transport uh, to rescue uh, Jewish children. Uh, he also saved around about 10,000 Jews from concentration camps. Uh, he saved about two thirds of the staff in his uh, uh, department store in Berlin. Got them abroad as well. Uh, there was also the managing director of uh, Shell BP in Lisbon. The flight itself left Lisbon Airport and was flying back to Whitchurch Airport in Bristol and uh, was shot down on the 1st of June in 1943. So this is the 80th year. Um, the station we're putting together is to commemorate that. The event itself is five days. Um, we've got, yeah, there's <laughs> lots going on at the moment. Um, we got permissions from a local council and I'm just waiting for our licensing authority Ofcom to do their bits. So uh, yeah, it's coming along quite well. Uh, it's a distraction. Um, you know, it, it's just full hands-on at the moment. The annoying thing is some of our members of uh, North Bristol Amateur Radio Club are, eh, that means I've got to put my cup of coffee down and go out and do something. Yeah, that kind of attitude, which is annoying, but I guess it's each to his own. Uh, there will be probably four, maybe five members of our club will come down. The club's not big, it's only, I think it's about 28, 30 members. So, um, it's not too bad. But no, that's been a distraction. Uh, what else? That's about it, really. Um, like I said, I feel a lot better myself. I'm no longer down and depressed. Uh, start of the month, I had another Kacinto injection. That went fine. I've had no side effects at all. Um, the usual little tiny spot of blood... Uh, after I did the injection, it does prove I've still got some blood, I suppose. But no side effects, no bruising, no nothing from the injection itself. 
Um, work is going well. Um, trying to keep busy. And uh, yeah, that's about it really. Oh, the stupidest, stupidest thing I've ever done in my life. My fault. And if my wife ever sees this, I'm so sorry. Really, I'm sorry for doing it. I pulled up on my front of my house uh, in this thing. I stopped. I put the handbrake on and went to switch the engine off. And I don't know what happened, but I caught the hand control, the throttle with something. And the car was still in reverse. Um, my car, if you if you accelerate, it will automatically release the handbrake, which it did. And I drove probably about half a meter behind me as a wall. I reversed straight into it. Um, I've scratched quite a lot of the paint on the back of the car, so uh, I've got to get that uh, repaired. There's no dents, thankfully. Uh, the wall looks okay, thankfully. But uh, my wife has uh, asked me to uh, get a builder in just to check it to make sure it's not damaged structurally or anything like that. I don't think it is, but uh, who am I to argue with my wife? After all, she is the boss. So uh, we're just doing that. Uh, this month, I've bit the bullet from last year when it was really, really hot and that really did affect my MS. I'm gonna put an air conditioning unit in. Uh, that's being fitted end of April. Uh, it's just the one single unit just to keep the uh, the office where I work cool as last year. It was just terrible. And actually triggered uh, a few, I don't know, not relapses as such. It's one of these pseudo relapses, I think they call them. It's just, I felt awful for, for a few days and things. Um, what else is happening this month? Nothing. So the next big thing for me is May next month. I've got uh, middle of May, we've got another uh, amateur radio event, which we do yearly, which is called Win uh, sorry, it's called Mills on the Air, where we, we attend uh, a, a mill, in our case it's a windmill, uh, for the National uh, Mills Weekend. It is a thing, trust me. Um, we found a lovely windmill down in, again, Somerset, which the owners are happy for us to operate from. And we're going to that, so hopefully the weather's going to be nice that weekend. Please, can the weather be nice that weekend? And then uh, the last couple of days of May and early June is, as I said, Flight 777, so there's that one. And then moving on through the year, in August, uh, the end of August, we have uh, lighthouses on the air, which is the international recognition of lighthouses. Um, I've located uh, a lighthouse in just outside of Bristol. Yes, we have lighthouse, so um, we've got uh, permissions to use that one. So that's lighthouses in in August, and then September, the last event for the year is uh, the railways on the air. Our local heritage railway. Uh, which is not actually that far from where I live, but that has invited us to their 1940s weekend. We've been there quite a few years now, and we've been invited again this year. So that's something to look forward to in September. So uh, radio-wise, quite a busy week, oh, quite a busy year now. Uh, so I'm glad I've kind of got over feeling down and sorry for myself uh, it does happen to me quite often I don't know if any of you guys who've got MS get this it's just like a veil of darkness just descends on me and it can last for I don't know 20 minutes it can last several hours several days several months and then it'll just go it's just like somebody's gone, oh yeah, you've got this cloud of doom over you. Let me just lift it off of you. That's it. We're all fine again. So when I get it, it's just a very dark place, very lonely, um, lots of uh, brain running wild 
going through the scenarios of if you do this, that will happen. What happens if you don't do that? This will happen. Um, an old friend of mine described it as playing chess, where you have to think ahead several moves. It's like that. I'm kind of going, well, if I do that, this, 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 and this will happen. If I don't do that, this will happen. If I do this, that will happen. Nah. And I then spend so much time worrying about things. And it's not a nice place. And that's all I can describe it as. It's like this veil of doom descends. And then as quick as it descends, it goes. And like I said, at the moment, it's gone. So I'm happy. I'm hoping that it's going to stay gone this year. Um, the MS is not uh, great. My hand, my left hand and my left side of my body is the side that's getting affected most. Um, I'm finding my grip on my left hand is not as good as it used to be. And I think when I was diagnosed, I had to do this peg test. Uh, you've got a, like a grid of pegs and you have to take them out of one grid and put them into another grid and you're timed. And I think if I did that test now, I would struggle as uh, hand-eye coordination is terrible, uh, which is a pain. I do a lot of electronics as well, which is difficult, especially when you can't hold things properly. Um, and yeah, that was all I think was all adding to me feeling a bit down and sorry for myself. But at the moment, I feel good. I really do feel good. So... I'm going to disappear because this needs a lot of editing. It'll probably, I've just recorded three lots of video, each one about 27, 28 minutes long. It was a video I also filmed in February, which I haven't published. Basically, as I went into this, I can't go and ask state. So I may see if I can do something with it. Probably not. But let me get back and, uh, do some editing of videos. That's it for now. Catch you all later. Bye.